I didn't know that was a genre. Well, hey everybody, uh, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, and we are back with the top four of the fifth Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine series. We started out with 128 players today. Huge shout out to the community for coming out. Um, and it was paired down to three Eldliches, a generator, two generators, sorry, um, an Adamancipator, a Mystic Mine player, and a World Legacy Mech Knight player that has since been paired down to the three generators and the World Legacy Mech Knight player. Uh, not generator, Eldlich. The Eldlich Menace uh, is... Oh boy, it is it is just everywhere. Um, so uh, I'm going to show you the match that is not an Eldritch Mirror. I would like to postpone having to watch and uh, commentate Eldritch for another 30 minutes. Uh, instead, I'm going to show you um, Rycape on World Legacy Mech Knight versus uh, Kitsune uh, Bala on Lich. Uh, let them know I'm ready to go and uh, they can fire off whenever they are comfortable. I am extremely excited to see what Rycape does. So let's go there now. So um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the World Legacy Mech Knight deck, it does a couple of things. And the funniest of those things is activates World Legacy Scars. Now, we've seen Scars resolve in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine series, most notably two weeks ago uh, in a match against Tamamo Bay's Water deck. Um... Okay, sure. Looks like Deep Sea Diva as the Halka Fibrax starter is becoming more normal than I had originally expected. Um, but uh, while it does do Scars things, it also has the possibility to, I don't know, just play heads up Mech Knight decks. Uh, you get to summon purple, uh, you get to play gear Su. Uh, I mean, it's got the ability to flex an Orcist, I think. I'm not sure about Rykape's list exactly, though I can um, certainly pull it up. All right, so we're gonna go uh, into Mecha Phantom Beast Aurorodon. Have you seen this combo before? And then uh, on the summon of three Mecha Phantom Beast tokens, the zero zero one in graveyard will trigger. And from this position, you can do just about anything in the game. Oh, unless your opponent has an Ibiru. Okay, right cape off to a good start with the big old rock boy. Uh, one thing about this uh, version of the Eldritch combo is going from Halka Fibrax into uh, Mecha Phantom Beast Aurorodon leaves you very, very open to the big old rock. All right, so set to pass. Very beatable open from Eldritch. Uh, let's see how right cape navigates it. Pot of Extravagance! Really? Pot of, pot of... Sorry, Pot of Extravagance in this deck? I was not under the impression this was a deck that could play Pot of Extravagance. Obviously, it's been working out for uh, Rycape, but... Uh, wow. Yeah, it's time to Polka. Alright, let's see what the Banishes were, I suppose. Of course, we can't. From here, we'll go into World Legacy's Memory. This card is extremely powerful. World Legacy's Memory allows you to special summon a Mech Knight from your hand or deck in defense. And then it returns to the uh, hand at the end phase. Uh, one guess as to whether that happens very often. For the rest of the turn, you can't summon anything but Mech Knights, but that's not too big of a problem. You can add blue, you can add uh, Gear Su. Alright, we're going to fire off uh, Mech Knight Blue Sky. And it's going to be met with Ghost, Mourner, and Moonlit Chill. This is the new hand trap released, I think, in Eternity Code. It's kind of Effect Veiler. Importantly, it's copies uh, 3 through 6 of Effect Veiler. Um, and it is activatable on either player's turn. Uh, so that's going to stop the purple for, or the uh, blue from going off. But it's not going to stop the 3,000 damage that this uh, Eldritch player is about to take. She kind of do be chillin' though, I gotta say. Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill, who will she negate? Alright, so unfortunately, uh, we're gonna take 2,000 damage, uh, because, of course, this copy of Mech Knight Blue Sky uh, left the field this turn. That is the other part of Ghost Mourner's effect. Much better in formats with time. 
And then we're going to make Morningstar discarding World Legacy World Chalice. That's a... Wow, that's a hefty one. This really is the lore deck. All right, so World Legacy World Chalice is an insane card. Uh, if uh, the main phase after it's sent to the graveyard, you get to banish it to add a World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. And uh, if it leaves the field, you get to summon two World Chalice monsters from your deck. Now, that probably is not going to happen in this deck, I would wager. Much more important in World Chalice Prime. Uh, but the search is good, too. Alright, let's fire off that Outland. <laughs> Chat says, correction, Imperm is Valor's copy 4 through 6. This is Valor's copy 7 through 9. Wow, Chad, I expect better of you. There was 800 damage uh, spent on this uh, copy of Cursed Eldan, and we didn't even get any minus 800s in the chat. All right, Eldritch in hand, let's go! Oh, Mr. E's, I apologize. All right, looks like a set pass. Uh, not really where you want to be for Eldlich. I I am interested to know what the hand looks like. That that is the uh, the viable option, and I am interested to know what these two set cards are. That they are literally doing nothing. Gonna get a purple with this uh, World Legacy's memory. Will return to hand at the end step. So to prevent that from happening, we'll activate Purple's effect in order to get a. Uh, a mech knight from deck. Now, importantly, purple doesn't banish for cost. So if you have removal, if you have a veiler, uh, you can fire it off. You know, not necessarily a veiler, but you can fire it off now and he will go back to the hand. All right, there's Conquistador. That will do it. And, ooh, Eldlixer of White Awakening, White Destiny. That specials a, an Eldritch from hand or graveyard, and the one in hand will do nicely. And then at resolution, of course, there will be a an Eldritch on field, so Conquistador will be able to pop that purple. But this is a great position to be in for the Mech Knight player. A column via your opponent's uh, setup, plus uh, the ability to absolutely pop off with something like a blue, uh, walk over all of your opponent's board. I mean, this is just fantastic. Special in blue and column management so important against this deck. All right, blue, let's go for Gearsu and Red Moon. Wow, those are two extremely good ones. And uh, wow, the Eldritch player just going to scoop to that. I don't blame them. And Mech Knight looking extremely strong there. We are one game away from Mech Knight in finals for like the sixth quarantine series in a row. I mean, let's not, you know, kid ourselves. Gearsu does a lot for the deck. But uh, that was a match where Gearsu wasn't even summoned until the very end. Sixth, isn't this the fifth? I'm memeing, chat! It's a May May! Let's see if we've got any updates about that other one. Does not look like it. Yeah, I would imagine the other uh, game is going to last 100 years. What round is this? This is semifinals. The winner of this goes on to face Eldlich once more. 
in the other semifinal, which is a closeout. Extravagance off the top. Ooh, must be the Mech Knight player going first. And uh, I think uh, Kitsune is going to figure out what happens when the deck with Gearsu is allowed to pop off. All right, time for the Gearsu line. Going to send a World Legacy World Chalice off the Gearsu, summon a couple of tokens, and uh, I hope you weren't preparing to infinite impermanence any of my board. Is it going to happen? Is Wait, is this it? Oh, chat, you've got to tell me. Is Does this do it? All right, let's go. Live the World Keyblade Master. This is not it with this list. Oh, a big frowny face out of Rykape. Though, the Trap Negator is pretty good too. Alright, we're going to fire off this copy of Purple Nightfall for a blue sky. And now that we've given our opponent a zone, we can basically just go off to the races. Uh, we're going to go for Blue Sky and get a copy of Indigo Eclipse. A big thonk out of Rykape. Hmm. Rykape not FTKing so we can Scars next turn. <laughs> Clever. This is the fifth YCS, yes. Alright, we are going to fire off this copy of Key. We can bring back the purple if we so desire. That is what we're doing. Uh, we're going to go into Morning Star. From here we can negate monster effects. I don't know how good that is. It's like fine. Oh my god, what was that? I, World Legacy Whispers. I saw this today in the, uh, the Histlander event. When this card is activated, you can target a level 5 or higher monster on the field that gains 1,000 attack and defense, negate a spell effect that activates in a Mech Knight column. Okay, alright. I could see that being extremely good. Unfortunately, its activation effect is, is pretty bad. Alright, so we're going to go for Eldritch first in hand, probably to pop the key, I'd imagine. Key seems pretty killer in this matchup. You're going to have to have something to negate that. Ah, uh, they went for the key. Okay, well... Tuning now being activated. I assume that will be met with uh, World Legacy Whispers. Nope. And then a normal summoned Jet Synchrone. We're going to switch the World Legacy token to attack, and uh-oh, with no trap negation on the field, uh, I think we might be in for uh, a little bit of an evenly matched. Uh, 
going to walk into the uh, Morning Star and be met with an artifact sanctum. Yeah, you can't chain sanctum to evenly matched. It doesn't really work that way. All right, we're going to take 2,000, and then at end of battle, I assume, we'll fire off an evenly matched. Keeping one set card. Are we getting purple back? We are not. Oh, no. We added it back with key. And then foolishly discarded it away. This is a... Terrible position to be in versus Eldritch, even if uh, you've time-walked them by preventing them from accessing the extra deck this turn. Chat saying secrets can still win. Uh, it's possible if it is secrets, but, you know, we don't have access to Indigo at this point in time anyway. It's going to be way less powerful than it could be. Yes, thank the Lord, Glow Up Bulb is banned. Oh, that's a problem. Activate Eldritch here, getting rid of the Haketo. Now we're going to have an Eldritch on field to potentially use with Conquistador in response to his secrets. Boy, that's not good. Normal Jet? Buddy, you're locked out of the extra deck. What are you normaling Jet for? To assert dominance. Okay, well that that's that's understandable. Alright, let's fire off the World Legacy Secret. Uh, as you expected, chat, that is the set. Gonna chain the Haketo here. Set a copy of Sanguine. There still is a Conquistador we have to worry about. Getting purple here is great because you can purple at end step in order to get something you need. Maybe a Dingirsu for your normal summon. And all you gotta worry about is that one Conquistador. Normal Jet to get 500 damage in. They got zero damage in. They had to use their battle phase for evenly. Blue, the ad. Wow, and their opponent has just gifted them a huge zone for blue. I wouldn't be surprised to see that activated in the standby phase. Nope, allowed to go to main phase, and yeah, we might just fire the blue right now. Twice in a row, that center zone has been just a little bit too alluring. You can respond with a Conquistador, but this is a Conk way earlier than you want. Like, you want to be Conking Secret, probably. Or Conking in response to the activation of uh, Purple's effect. And now you're not really going to get the uh, opportunity. You'll fire the purple here. If they conk in response, then you're able to summon yellow and pop whatever spell or trap you want. Wow, this is... who Something as, as simple as column management might accidentally lose uh, Kitsu this game. Yeah, uh, Tamamo Bay absolutely right in chat. Straight up might have lost the match because didn't play around columns. All right, so Conquistador has made it onto the battlefield. Uh, it will be popping purple. But uh, any spell or trap is going to unlock a zone for yellow. For Ding. I mean, Ding can... Or Gearsu can make a zone on its own. <laughs> right Cape says, trust me, there is still Yu-Gi-Oh! to play. A test example, there are 64 players, uh, except... When Mambo is helping, in which case there's 128. What are the odds there's a Neos Fusion engine in here? 
I actually don't think there is. All right, it's gear suit time, ladies and gentlemen, and you'll notice the last gear suit target is still in the graveyard. Has it been a main phase yet? I don't play Neos. Boo. You always need to watch out for the farthest zones on the left and right. You never know when you're at against Pendulum Mech Knight. That's a good point. That's a good point. All right, let's fire off this World Chalice. I wonder what the target for this is. Well, uh, memory is pretty good. All right, uh, Galati, the play. Are we just making Orcus now? We can shuffle back World Chalice Poggers! All right, uh, this just draws us some cards, but more importantly, puts up zones. All right, here comes Yellow Star into the zone with two, and it really, that two zone is just killing us here. We're going to banish one of the dings. Pop that bad boy, uh... Elixir of Scarlet Sanguine. And then next, I think we're probably going to summon something to this zone. Oh no, we're, we're going for Ding. Forget Lil Gearsu, we're making the big boy. Alright, so of course this is a Send, not a Destroy, so we can easily get rid of this Eldritch. Wow, and uh, we can walk over pretty much everything here, leaving uh, Scarlet Sanguine exclusive in Graveyard. This is not the last match. There's one more after this. All right, uh, Gearsu out of the deck. Gearsu can trigger here because guess what we put back in the deck? It is World Chalice. This is kind of cool as like a resource loop uh, in combination with the dings. And then you can uh, send it to the graveyard with the uh, orchestrated return. We're going to go to combat here. Uh, leaving the Eldritch on field is probably the best idea possible i i don't think there's any reason you would want to target anything else and and you'd have to jump through a couple of hoops to get over it regardless so instead looks like we're just going to set a couple of cards and uh pass it back all right how far can an eldritch player go from this position well they have access to a scarlet sanguine so another uh trap card they have a conquistador end step they have a jet synchron in graveyard so if they want to start trying for um halka fibrax plays they can no indigo on the uh, side of uh, Rickape, and so no, you know, repeatable effect negation here, but possible. All right, we're going to set Golden Land Forever. Ooh, that reeks of desperation. Uh, either they're going for some huge play or aim to close out the game in the next couple of turns. <laughs> chat i see nothing wrong with prematurely declaring rykape's victory yeah eldritch has never been capable of playing from behind big think on this one ah uh, and your back's really against the wall here A normal Jet Synchron, come on! And there's the Halka Fibrax. We're gonna use the Halka Fibrax effect, revealing a second secret! God's back, baby! Oh my gosh! Raw draw, no search! Oh! I never should have said must be nice about normal jet. This individual found double secret. <laughs> Would have summoned Scythe if it wasn't banished face down. <laughs>
Oh, wow. Okay, you know, chat is, is uh, cheering, but this is not the end of the game. There's no way to move these cards around. Uh, Eldritch can come back. We don't have a 0-0-1 in Graveyard, but we do have a Jet Synchron. If we pop this card and then uh, find a way into a Roradon with an extra material to go into, like, a Barricade Borg blocker, we could easily uh, make a Borload Savage and walk with it from there. Oh, wow. Alright, looks like uh, Jet Synchron is the play, and... Ooh, I don't know what we're fiending for. Might be... Auroradon here. Alright, so let's fire off the Auroradon. There's three. Now the destruction effect not going to be very good with a ding on the field, obviously. We can don ourselves and a token to get an O-Lion and go into Savage. Savage plus Eldlich clears the board pretty nicely. All right, we're going for the Dawn effect. I assume it's the two. No real reason to go for anything else. I'm shocked in three cards. There's no hand traps. Going for three? When was the last time you saw Mecha Phantabisa Road on 3 effect activated? This adds a trap to the hand. Oh my god. Oh my god, we are going to activate evenly matched. Oh my gosh. This is so risky. Are you kidding me? We're, we're going to decline to summon, then go to combat, walk in for 100... Fire the evenly. No, don't do that now! Oh, no. Another indigo still in deck! And the rock! The rock is in the hand, baby! Oh, good luck evenlying me out now! <laughs> With the token on your side of the field! Oh, no, and all you gotta find is an out to the rock, and this game is wrapped up to rock from the start of the game. You don't understand. These rocks were solid from the very beginning. We're gonna get Red Moon, and what do you know? Bad placement of the rock there. A rookie mistake. In the future, summon rock to a zone without anything else in it. Oh, wow, and that... I believe is going to be it. Rykape with a 2-0 victory over one of the remaining Eldritch players. Wow! Didn't get to see Scar's Resolve, but did get to see Banish My Own Monster into Nibiru out of a third effect Auroradon to evenly the game back up. Unbelievable. Folks, Rykape did it. But he's going to have to do it one more time. Going to have to walk it back against specifically Eldlich in order to once again be victorious over the best deck in the format. Got